have one of my uh, my great friends that uh, I talked to on 75 meters for years. And uh, I want to bring Doug into here. Doug, are uh, you and Maida there tonight? WG4U, how are you? I'm Bob. Maida's in the other room, and hello to everyone. Well, I, you always are, are my, um, I, I just adore your work. You do some of the most incredible building. And uh, you sent me some recent pictures, and we're going to run through some of these. And uh, this is a tuner, but it's not just a tuner. Uh, it's a balance tuner. Tell us a little bit about what's on that screen, Doug. Okay. Well, starting from the far left, of course, is a coaxial input from your rig. And then I've got uh, the number 31 beads uh, around the, uh, that's actually, uh, well, it's a, yeah, it's RG213 coax. And then I've got 15 beads, and that's RF choking to keep any signal from coming back into the shack or on this side of the tuner. Then there is two uh, large roller inductors, which covers 160 80 and 40 relatively well. They're almost too big to go to 20 because they have uh, too much interelectrode capacitance to them. And then you have a, a capacitor across the two, and this is a balanced, balanced tuner. Uh, a lot of people run a, an L tuner, an L network, and this is basically a double of that for balanced line. And, of course, balanced line doesn't radiate because it is balanced. And, and across those coils, I have a, a 65 to 870 PF. Uh, it's an SF6, which is the gas that's in it for insulation capacitor. Vacuum capacitor works just as well or an air variable. And when I started out, I only had that on the output side. And then I found out that if you ran into impedance at some frequency, you had to uh, lower, you know, lower than 50 ohm. Then I would have to switch it to the to the input side. So that's what the switch is there, Bob. And that's yeah. And it's it's very low loss tuner. It's just just basically no loss at all. Well, it, it's very unique, and let's. Uh... Let's take a look at the next picture, and uh, this will give you some uh, some idea of how this thing is built. It it really is incredible. The uh, there, it's actually two tuners. Most people would only have one, as you would say. Tell us a little bit about what's right in the middle, Doug. That uh, cylinder. That cylinder is a. It's not a vacuum variable. It's a gas air variable, or and by, it's just like a. Uh, an air variable capacitor, but it has this SF6 gas around it, which is one of the world's best insulators. We used them. I worked at a power plant, and we used SF6 when we was breaking 168,000 volt lines and stuff like that with with maybe no more than a half inch gap. And uh, uh -huh. so that capacitor contains that. It's it's pretty amazing insulator. Sulfuric hexafluoride is what the, the gas is in it, Bob. Yeah, I see a belt that uh, runs uh, both of those at the same time. And uh, it, it, the, the really cool part of it is what you have done, your, your, your construction is always really meticulous. But uh, the back of it's ordinary. But then you really turned the corner on us. It's what you did with it. Tell us a little bit about what we're seeing here. This is cool. <laughs> okay, well, I live in a mobile home. And that was a part of the uh, closet here in the bedroom. And in that portion of the closet originally was the hot water tank. And uh, I took that and moved it because I didn't want it inside. And that left me a blank space up there. And so I mounted the tuner. Uh, I fixed that and mounted the tuner there in the wall. And that way I could bring the balance line in from right behind it from outside. And I made an insulated panel and did some, there you go, with some ceramic feed-throughs. And that's how the balance line gets into the, to the back of the closet and then up to the tuner. And uh, that way I just, I just punched the radio in tune and walk over and watch the meter and dial the wheels till I got her matched out. 
<laughs> That's great. Then we come to another great part. You made your own feed line. I see Maida there. You uh, you stretched this out. How long is that? You used uh, saw horses to get started. Uh, how long is the feed line? Uh, I had the kit I bought was for 250 feet of feed line it was supposed to make. And I closed the spacing on them just a little bit from their recommendations so that the line would stay straight. And I built, uh, oh, about 170 feet or so of feed line there. That was enough to go from where I wanted to be to to the tower and up the tower to the uh, antenna over. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, one of the other really cool things in in this next picture, uh, this is a, a this is the only way to do this. Uh, tell us about ladder snap. What a really great thing that is. Oh, they certainly are. They're they're just basically spacers for your for your open wire and number fourteen uh, THHC uh, wire, solid or stranded. I use stranded because of the flexibility of it. But anyway, that just snaps right into those, and they hold perfect spacing and build you a 600 ohm line. And uh, oh, you just the convenience of them is just wonderful. They're well worth what they cost. I'll say that for it, Bob. Yeah, and then the uh, uh, the uh, the thing that that I was noticing, you'll see it here in the next one. The uh, the way that you uh, snapped it on and spaced it, that's kind of neat. You uh, space it away and uh, you had your special little, uh, uh, little pliers that you notched out so that uh, it made it easier there. That, that's uh, showing the pliers. You didn't, that way it fits into the plastic snap, right? Right. One side you can see I ground away part of the pliers and, and made a, a, a little bar that just sat right on the wire and the outside went on the on the other side of the end of the ladder snap and you put that on the wire and it just pops it right into the groove some people uh spray a little lubricant on there i did not i didn't have any trouble snapping them in and once that wire snapped into that to that ladder snap it doesn't move it it's very very solid and rigid and uh, the pvc pipe there that made us hold it's what i use for spacing i think i said it at 16 inches long they recommend 18 but I, cl I shortened it up a little bit because I wasn't building full 250 feet and I knew I had enough snaps to do the job. Well, it did. What's really cool about it is it um, you just, you're such a, a a home brewer and a builder and just one of the the best that I've seen some of your work with your amplifiers and stuff. But uh, here it takes it right to the end you you made your own feed line and so can everybody else uh, this was a question i had but you solved that didn't you oh yeah i i uh, took some military fiberglass poles and uh, elevated it uh, approximately 10 feet above the ground and so that it wouldn't bother me if i wanted to drive the truck through there or the van or the four-wheeler or mowing or anything and uh I I come off the back deck and and uh, then turned and went up the tower right there like you're seeing. And what I do there is I anchor that feed line at the bottom, and I I ran it up with the rope when I pull it up the pulley until it's taut. And uh, once you get it that way, you don't have to worry about the wind blowing it around. You don't have to worry about uh, standoffs to hold it rigid. I've never had a problem in any kind of weather. It just it does a great job, and it and it always tunes right out. The only thing I well, ever see, the only thing I ever see that changes it is is the rain. When I get a lot of moisture, <laughs> I have to tune it a little bit, Bob. Well, it's just a great story. I wanted to share it with with our uh, audience because uh, these are some of the, some of the questions we get once in a while uh, uh, about tuners, and uh, you just really have to be careful. Some of these tuners are not very good, but boy, the balanced tuner is a way to go, and uh, you, it's a really unique way of doing the feed line. I really appreciate that, Doug. What great work. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I appreciate you taking the time to uh, to talk with me. You know, makes you proud Absolutely. when you build something. 
Well, we'll see you on the 3740 after a while. And uh, anybody got questions, they can find you there late night. You and Maida and Jim and all the guys. I appreciate your time and sending all those pictures. And uh, we'll get into some of your amplifiers one of these days because, boy, you sure have done work on that. So thanks a lot. And uh, I'll see you later. Okay. Thank you, Bob. We'll see ya. <laughs>